Okay, we're going to try this again, okay? There was a live broadcast that we put out. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, get rid of that broadcast. Uh, it's basically what I'm about to tell you. But we had some technical difficulties, and I'm not too sure that that went out. So we're going to go ahead and do it this way. Uh, just a reminder, you can go to our website and support our podcast, www tinyurl.com slash Radio Dawn. You can put something in the piggy bank. You can uh, do your shopping at Amazon through the link. Uh, that supports us. And uh, some other ways you can support us as well. You can also support us by uh, getting some uh, solar work done on your house. We're partnering with Solar City to get you free installation and $250 off this June. If you want more information, all you got to do is write to me and I'll give you all the information, it's especially for people who listen to this podcast. My email address is donald.pashal at live.com. That's donald.pashal at live, L I V E dot com. I just finished listening to uh, Glenn Beck today, and once every three or four years, he does make a cognitive, uh, cognitive argument. And he was talking about the time when, he, when, when Glenn Beck had a, uh, had a logo, not the logo that he currently has, but he had a logo that uh, had a stylized lowercase g. And if you've seen the Glenn Beck show, say, back in the days when he was uh, doing uh, his program on um, what is now known as HLN, you know the logo I'm talking about. Well, he got into trouble with Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, the singer, had a similar logo with a similar typeface, lowercase g. Uh, Beck? Thought it was really crazy that you know you're you're fighting and you're being sued over a lowercase g. But actually, as Beck pointed out, because he eventually lost the suit, he owned that that lowercase g. Uh, Garth Brooks did, and Brooks realized a long time ago that you have to defend that every single time. Or else you'd lose that, that, the right to use that as your uh, logo. That's why anytime somebody decides to uh, use a Mickey Mouse character or a Bugs Bunny character as a logo for their store or something like that, they run the risk of getting a phone call from the legal departments of either Warner Brothers or Walt Disney or whatever. You have to defend your rights every single time. That was Glenn Beck's argument. So far, so good. And he was talking about the Constitution, the rights, the, 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 uh, the, all the articles of the Constitution. Um, and so you, if you don't defend those rights every single time, you lose those rights. And he used as an example the surviving brother who was arrested and charged with uh, the explosions at the Boston Marathon. He wasn't Mirandized. I went off on that myself. So did Glenn Beck. And he didn't want to defend this guy, but you also have to defend the principles of the Constitution every single time. Otherwise, you lose those, those articles, those, those, those rights. That's why I am so against this uh, censorship by blackmail, otherwise known as boycotts. Boycotts that have been um, fomented by people on both sides. Occupy on the left, American Family Association on the right. They have all used the uh, 
the power of blackmailing advertisers to try to get somebody or something off the air. That is censorship to me. It may not be in the Constitution specifically, but that is, that is censorship to me. And if you violate the spirit of that, the spirit of free speech, I may love you, but on that I'm against you. So far, so good. Then he starts talking about the IRS problems that uh, Obama's having. And the Tea Party uh, being investigated. And things like that. This shows, uh, there'll be parts of this that'll be up, up on, on YouTube, you'll probably listen to it. If you've got uh, Glenn Beck's uh, podcast, it, it would be in his second hour, you'll find that out too. There is, though, a problem with that. Actually, two. Number one, there are laws that say that if you engage in political activity, that political activity is not tax exempt. And the question was with all of these Tea Party organizations popping up, are they there for. Um, community benevolence or are they there for political purposes? What Beck did not say is that of all the uh, all the groups that were targeted there were also some liberal groups the one group that didn't get the 501c3 um, status was a liberal group. It's not trying... What they were trying to do was investigate if a law was being broken or if they were trying to get away uh, with a tax exempt status. Which brings me to another thing that wasn't mentioned on Glenn Beck's program, but I would like to, to mention it. And that is freedom of speech. The argument from the Tea Party people has been that the IRS targeting of certain Tea Party groups was a t an attack of free speech. No, it is not. You have the right to speak totally. A person has the right to give money to a Tea Party group. It's just not tax deductible. I believe that money is speech. I believe that your donations are a form of speech. I have no problem with that. I have less problem with Citizens United as than many of my folks on the left do. I understand that. But it's not tax deductible. You send that check to that organization knowing it's not tax deductible. In a certain sense, that makes your speech stronger because you're putting something at risk. You're putting, you're putting tax dollars at risk, money that you would have to write out to taxes because your donation to that group is not tax exempt. You're willing to take that fall for that. Money is speech. I am not arguing that. What I am arguing is that if the law says that political actions are not tax deductible, then the IRS has the right, considering all of these Groups were, had sprung up all at once to take a look at these groups. And I believe they would have done that for liberal groups too. Now, if I'm wrong, fine. Okay, you can argue that.
But if you're doing political work with that, that work is not tax deductible. Now, humorous talk show host and uh, person who's more liberal than I am, uh, Hal Sparks, came up with a brilliant solution to all of this. Let's get rid of the 501c3, 501c3 thing. Get rid of it. And do it this way. You start an organization. The stuff that you do that is under the tax exemption law would be tax exempt. The, st- the stuff that's political wouldn't be. And there you go. No one, no one is stopping you from speaking. No one. We're just trying to figure out whether or not a law has been violated or whether a law might be uh, danced around. Trust me. And I'm talking to my folks on the right. Trust me. If the situation were reversed and a lot of these groups turned out to be left-wing groups and the IRS did the same thing that they did with the right-wing Tea Party groups, not only would you support them, you would egg them on and say, do more of that. Thank you very much, IRS. They're violating laws left and right. I support that. You would say that. Not to mention the fact that folks on the left would probably be the ones screaming about their uh, constitutional rights being violated. It's one of those, you know, shoes on the other foot things. Again, the website's www.tinyurl.com slash Radio Don. Hope you have a good day. Talk to you later.